Good morning. Welcome to uh, Palm Sunday, the service of worship as broadcasted from Paso Grove Beach Community Church, United Church of Christ. On your screen, you should be seeing a call to worship followed by unison prayer. Let us together join our voices in this. Give thanks to God. God's steadfast love endures forever. Hosanna to God, Hosanna in the highest. With God on our side, what can we fear? What can humankind do? Hosanna to God, Hosanna in the highest. We shall triumph over the trials of these days and stand confident in the Lord our God. Hosanna to God, Hosanna in the highest. The Lord is our strength, might, and salvation. Hosanna to God, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna to God, Hosanna in the highest. And together we pray, humble and riding on a donkey, we greet you. Acclaimed by crowds and corralled by children, we cheer you. Moving from the peace of the countryside to the corridors of power. We salute you, Christ our Lord. You are giving the beast of burden a new dignity. You are giving majesty a new face. You are giving those who long for redemption a new song to sing. With them, the heart and voice, we shout. Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord.
Once again, welcome to Pastor Grove Beach Community Church, our Palm Sunday worship service through our online streaming services. We are entering Holy Week. Holy Week is that time that has been set aside by the church for us to remember the last week in the life of Jesus, a, uh, a very, very suffering and oppressed time for him, a time that is full of a lot of mourning and um, readings that are very painful. And it's important to remember that all those suffering that uh, Jesus had, because when we wake up on Easter morning, his resurrection means that much more. So during this time of self-isolation, when we are unable to gather at the church, you might be wondering, what is the schedule of worship here? Well, to let you know, um, we have several things going on. First of all, we are going to stream a Monday, Thursday service here at uh, 7 o'clock in the evening. And it's a service uh, that, traditionally speaking, we offer the Sacrament of Holy Communion. This is a time of creativity for you in your home with your loved ones to uh, share the sacrament in actually in a very historic and authentic manner, the way that the early church used to do it. Back in those days, they, they worshiped at home. They worshiped in their, with their loved ones around a table. And so we have an opportunity this Monday, Thursday to return to those roots and do a, a uh, sacrament of Holy Communion with our loved ones around our own dinner tables. And so we are going to provide a, a, uh, a brief uh, worship service structure for you to do at your home Monday, Thursday, 7 o'clock. Please tune in. Also, we have a Stations of the Cross available for those people who want to pray. Traditionally speaking, Christianity and especially the more orthodox uh, aspects of Christianity have used the Stations of the Cross on Good Friday to remember that suffering of Jesus carrying the cross all the way up to Calgary. And so we have provided a modern and relevant version of the Stations of the Cross and it's virtual. And so that will be available also during Holy Week online. Go to our website and you will find the Stations of the Cross, a virtual uh, version of them. Now, the thing about the Stations of the Cross is that different people have different tolerance levels for that kind of prayer. And so it's a total of 14 stations. You could do them all in one sitting if you'd like, if that's the case, uh, you know, find a good place in your home where you can sit and do that. Or maybe you want to spread them out through Holy Week or spread them out through the course of, of a day or two and find yourself at different times contemplating this difficult passage of, of our Lord and Savior. And then Easter Sunday, we will be once again uh, broadcasting online multiple services and we ask that you stay tuned to our daily emails, our e-blasts that go out, that will give you a, a schedule of services for Easter Sunday so that you could um, worship the resurrection of our Lord and Savior from your home at a safe distance from others. I want to let you know of uh, several things that are happening throughout the county. And one of them I saw that um, for people who want to make a mask out of cloth, out of a bandana at home, or maybe a handkerchief, there's an easy way of doing it, and that is by getting some hair ties and putting them at the end. And so in that way you could put it around you and then use these to loop them around your ears. This is a very uh, easy thing to do with um, products that you may already have at home, assuming that you don't have access to uh, a good mask. And then we have our caregiving services still going on, and we want you to talk to us. Let us know if you are in need of somebody to help you with your groceries, uh, to pick up a prescription at the, um, at the pharmacy, or to do some other small chores. We have a group of volunteers that are willing to 
go outside and uh, help those individuals who are stuck at home and are unable to, uh, to venture outdoors because they are self-isolating or maybe they are in quarantine. So um, send us an email or, or, or just uh, call us and let us know if you are one of those people. And so now I invite you to take a nice deep breath, get centered. And take away from your mind all distracting thoughts. Forget about the news cycle and the latest alarming trends of this virus. And let us quiet ourselves. Let us become still for this time of prayer. Good and gracious God, on this day we remember that majestic entrance to Jerusalem that Jesus did on a donkey and how people laid out palm branches. On this day, we remember this knowing that <clears throat> our own comings and goings are restricted. Our own ability to enter into other spaces and into the city is um, limited. And so this is a time for us to sit still in our homes. And we pray that your Holy Spirit grant us the peace of mind that we require to contemplate and to find your presence within us and among us. That as we go from room to room and activity to activity, we might still be able to connect with your divine presence. It's a strange time for us because so many of us are used to constantly moving. So many of us are always on the go, be it land, air, or sea. And this is a time where we have to stand still. So help us to reflect on where we stand. What is it exactly that we stand for? And when we have to take a stand, what is it exactly that we're willing to do it for? Are we willing to stand for our faith? Are we willing to stand for justice? Are we willing to stand for love? And so as we stand and examine our stance, it's a good time for us to also get rooted. It's a good time for us to become firmly planted in our faith and in all those things that make us your followers. Remembering that triumphal entrance of Jesus and how in the course of one week things change so drastically. We recognize that our lives are also fragile as well. One day we may have the feeling that we're in the top of the world and every palm branch of every palm tree is waving just for us. Only for a few days later for us to feel at our lowest, beaten. Help us to become aware of your holy presence in our mountaintop experiences and in our valleys. Help us to know that it is all part of our spiritual growth and spiritual expressions. That we should be able to open our hearts and our minds to your presence. That we might be able to move with it at all times. Remembering the words of Jesus who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Mark. Mark is the first gospel that was written in, uh, in chronologically speaking. It was then followed by Matthew and Luke, and the last gospel to have been written was John. And so here we have in Mark chapter 11, verses, one, verses 4 through 10, we have uh, the gospel writer telling us about the entrance of Jesus on a colt into Jerusalem. And according to Mark, they went and found a colt tied to a door at the street corner and untied it. Some of those standing there said, what are you doing untying that colt? The disciples replied exactly as Jesus had instructed them, and the people let them alone. They brought the colt to Jesus, spread their coats on it, and he mounted. The people gave him a wonderful welcome, some throwing their coats on the street, others spreading out rushes they had cut in the field. Running ahead and following after, they were calling out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name, in God's name. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Here ends our reading. We ask for God's blessings upon it. What a every Monday, Sunday morning, I come in after the Sabbath, and this place is an absolute mess. You know, I do not know what people think. I do not, raised in a barn, what is this? They come down, this is my street, this is my city, and you know what? It is really bad at past. All these people come, they bring these animals, they have the sacrifice, and you know, if the mess isn't bad enough in the street, you should smell all those sacrifices at the temple. Just going up all over the place. Passover. Passover. All these people coming. Passover. You know what I wish? I wish Passover would just once. Passover. <laughs> I wish it would pass over so I didn't have to clean all this stuff up. And you know, there, you know another thing that Passover brings with it? Passover brings with it all these messiahs. Everybody has a messiah. Everybody has a messiah. And everybody wants to be a messiah. Those kooks down at Qumran, you know, they're into the ritual washing, they're into the bathing, they're into the kind of holier-than-thou sort of thing. They have their messiah. Then there's those nuts up in Galilee. They got theirs. They've been prophesying for a long time. And then you have those others, the zealots, Nisgari. You know, their Messiah is one who's going to overthrow Rome. Why, right now they've got one of them locked up, locked up in the tower, Pilate's tower right now. His name is Barabbas. Barabbas. Well, Barabbas had his way, things would happen, and they wouldn't happen for the better. But, you know, some people like that. Some people want a revolution. Some people want it. And actually, I think the Romans would want it. The Romans would probably want it because then they could just be done with us once and for all. Completely done with us. I do not understand this mess. Move your feet here. <laughs> God. I do not know what people think. Even that guy that came today, you know what they called, they said about him, they said, Hail, son of David, Hosanna, hear us, Savior, yada, 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 yada. Same old, same old. It's always the same. It's always the same. Oy vey, always the same. And they leave me this, come on, move, just a little.
leave me this mess. But you know, there was something different about today. There was something different that I noticed that, you know, a lot of this wasn't new. Palm branches, that's new. They do that for every king, everybody who comes, palm branches, you know. Heck, you go out on the street and just get them when the wind blows, not a big deal there. Shouting, waving, that's not, that's not new. It's not new. But you know what was different today? There was something really different today. Today, you know what I noticed they did? They took off their coats. Did you notice that? They took off their coats and they threw them down. They took off their coats. Now, to you, this might not be a very big deal to take off your coat and throw it down, right? But I want to tell you something about the coat. The coat, for us, protects us from the weather. The coat is something I can make into a shelter from the sun, or from the rain, or for anything else. The coat is a vital thing for me. And I'll tell you something else. If I am thrown in jail for not paying my debts, the last thing they would do is, you know, give me any assistance. I'm on my own. They can take away my job. They can take away my house. They can sell my family into slavery. But you know what they can't take away? You know what the Romans can't take away? You know what nobody can take away? They can't take your coat. By law, your coat is yours. You know the only way you get this? I have to give it to you. I have to give it to you. That's different. And it makes me wonder, what was so special about this guy? What was so special about this guy that people were willing, you know, you can pick up those palm fronds anywhere. Anybody can jump up and down. I mean, haven't you been to the Colosseum and watched the lions fight the bears? That's a joke. <laughs> what was so special about this guy that they threw down their coat. You know, years ago, well, not that many, but a couple years ago, I went up to Galilee, had to visit the in-laws, a bunch of fishermen. You know what fishermen are like? Uh, it was this big. <laughs> and I caught this many, you know. They always kind of stretch the story. So when the in-laws said, you've got to come up and listen to this guy, you know. He's got a different tale to tell. He's healing people. He's resuscitating people. He's exercising demons. I said, oh, yeah, a bunch of fishermen. You can really believe them. But, you know, I went up there. I went up there to, to listen to him. And there was something different about what he said. There was something different, and it was hard to accept or believe. I mean, he talked about this stuff, love your enemies. Yeah, I'll bet the, yeah, love your enemies, right? Love your neighbor. My neighbor should love me. The meek shall inherit the earth. Oh, yeah, the Romans like that one. But there was something else about him. He, he spent all his time with people others forgot. It wasn't always what he said, it's what he did. He took time to touch lepers. You don't touch lepers. They're totally unclean. He was obsessed with Samaritans. We all know that they're from the wrong side of the tracks. He talked about change. Nobody likes change, except if you're the beneficiary. But then he also talked about this kingdom where these annoying little kids were welcome, and everyone just as well. And there was something appealing to that, because I don't know about you, but if I could change my broom for something better, I'd do it. <laughs> imagine, imagine, he said, me an equal to the Pharisees, me an equal to the high priest. Imagine, he said, I could eat at the table of Caesar. What a different picture 
of the world. And it's kind of appealing. No wonder people cheered. I mean, if you think about that, no wonder people cheered. People got excited because when you think about it, isn't, oh, yeah, Filene's bargain basement. <laughs> you can tell what kind of crowd was here. But when you think about it, isn't that image of the world kind of appealing? Where regardless of who you are or where you came from, regardless of what job you do, you're welcome and accepted? I mean, that really is something about worth getting excited about. That's something I would, I think I would, take off my coat, which I already did, and lay it there. It's about a different world and change. A dream that somehow he embodied. But when you think about it, but when you think about it, change of this sort, he can talk all he wants to about change, but the hardest change is not the change out there. The hardest change is the change in here. And maybe that's what they were cheering about is, at least for a very short time, they felt that. They knew that. And maybe it wasn't so foolish to take their coats off. Maybe it wasn't so ridiculous to give up the one thing that they had absolute control over. The one thing that the only way you could get it from me is for me to give you the shirt off my back. You know what? I wasn't here for this parade. I missed it. I missed it. And, and maybe, maybe I missed a whole lot more. Maybe I should do more. Maybe I... Maybe I've still got some time. Maybe I'm going to go find this guy. Maybe he's still got more to say. I don't know what the week ahead is, but before it's too late, I want to go. I'm going to go. In fact, that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to go. Because you know what? I think there's more... I think there's more he has to say. I think there is. I don't think it's too late, and I'm going to try and follow him. I'm going to try and follow him. Why don't you come with me? And why don't you help me clean up this mess? The mess in our lives, the mess in our world. Why don't you come? Follow me. Follow him. Follow him, too. Pastor Grove Beach Community Church continues to provide assistance to the community, not only through our caregiving ministries and through our online services, but we continue to give to the broader church, which in turn has national and global ministries that at this time, during this pandemic, is mobilizing services and resources for those that are in need. And so, I say this as a reminder that even though we may not be able to gather here at this church and pass the plate and give you an opportunity to lay down your Sunday offering, that you could still help us be church and to have this presence in the community and beyond by giving your weekly donation online. We do have a... Uh, and an online display of, of an offering plate and of other ways for you to click and, and give a donation. If you are able to do so, we really appreciate it in these times of need. So now, please join me in the uh, closing prayer as it, it is printed 
uh, on your screen. Gracious God, champion of the universe, we so often fluff ourselves up. After all, aren't we the ones who compose masterpieces of music and art? Don't we govern ourselves, enrich ourselves, promote ourselves? Can't we dunk basketballs, bat baseballs, spike volleyball? Other creatures don't practice rocket science. We do. Yet here we are, frightened by a thing so small it can't be seen under most microscopes. A virus, a mere parasite, dependent on our own living cells to replicate. Still, it has shuttered our schools, canceled our flights, and emptied our churches. It has consumed the attention of our leading scientists, wrenched our politics out of shape, dominated our conversations, and scared the daylights out of us. We don't want to get sick, and we don't want to die. We are afraid. Great and quiet source of peace, calm our fears. We are weary, uncertain, strong, tight. Come our fears. We have no idea what the future will bring, but we do know that you will be in our future to hold us. We are beyond ourselves, no longer capable of quieting, comforting, helping ourselves. All we can do is wash our hands and keep our distance. Our knowledge is not great enough, and our wisdom dwarfed by this challenge. Great God, source of peace, quiet us. Your anxious children, that we might rest securely in our faith and your care. Strengthen us, body and soul, that we might be made whole, continuing to share your compassion and hope with others. Hear our prayer. Help us to not be afraid. Amen. And so it is that we now end this service of worship, but the day and the week give us plenty of opportunity to continue to provide service for others and to worship and praise God's name in every quiet and stillful manner that we can. May the love of God, the peace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit keep us safe, keep us healthy, make us whole. Amen. Frustrated brother, see how he's tried to light his own candle some other way. See now your sister, she's been robbed and lied to, still holds a candle without a flame. So carry your candle.
whose hearts are blazing. So let's raise our candles and light up the sky. Pray unto our Father in the name of Jesus.